I've done the opening and welcome, but uh, I think the credentials as well, whilst we were doing them informally, I assume that the process has taken care of that. Uh, but also in terms of the formal apologies, I think we can entertain because that's one aspect we haven't uh, formally uh, uh, talked to. Uh, adoption uh, of the agenda. Can I quickly uh, check if there are those uh, formal apologies uh, uh, coordinated, please? Good morning, Honorable Chair. Uh, they, 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 they are all apologies, Honorable Bonyana and Honorable Fishani indicated that he is on the is traveling on the road. She will sometimes lose network. So, secondly, Chair, I was going to ask that uh, uh, I, I was going to request to send the, 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 the short report to the Honorable Members because I can't upload on the screen. It's saying it should be on the PowerPoint. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm, I'm noting that. Uh, I think you can do that as we um, are busy uh, clearing uh, the house as well uh, in terms of the agenda. Can honorable members accept the apologies uh, and adopt the agenda as well uh, as, in, as it uh, stated in front of us? Chair, my hand is up. And yes, I, yes, sir. I move, I rise to move the, for the acceptance of the, both the apologies and the agenda. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Consul. Any second to that? Honorable Vimbayo, seconding Honorable Consul. Thanks, madam. Honorable members, in terms of... Uh, Item number four, we've got uh, two important uh, issues that are at the core of this uh, uh, today. Meeting. One is the um, report on the Division of Revenue Bill 2020, um, and also the 4.2 negotiating mandate uh, that would be coming from us as the Eastern Cape province. Um, and I'm sure most of us would recall that the presentation in our last uh, finance committee meeting was done. And also we took this decision that today we shall converge uh, to receive uh, uh, presentations uh, from the stakeholders, uh, which then shall help us to talk to 4.2 in terms of the negotiating mandate. Um, so that is the purpose of this meeting. And it's supposed not to take us long. Um, it's a matter that we can't dispose of. But I must say, though, that uh, we could not do otherwise uh, as required by law uh, in terms of public participation. Hence, we took the decision to say let the stakeholders be sent the copy of the Division of Revenue uh, Bill um, and make comments and submissions that should form part of the broader uh, Eastern Cape presentation, uh, of which Friday was a deadline for those submissions uh, from the stakeholders. Um, and basically, that is uh, our uh, meeting uh, here today uh, to to entertain those and and, and and build from from those submissions. Can I allow then the hello? Can you switch off your? Oh, thanks. Uh, can I get an indication, Doc, whether the copies have uh, sent to the members? 
I'm sorry, Mr. Chad. Yes, Honorable Chair, I have sent you through the, the emails. I'm sure where the honorable members oh, no. confirm so the presentation is made. Honorable Chair, you could see speaking. I'll confirm that I've got it. I've received the, yeah. the agenda as well as the presentation. Presentation, yes. Thanks, Honorable Kutsu. I take it that we we, we, we are done, honorable members. Uh, can I invite you, uh, Ramsmo, for the presentation? Yes, honorable chair. Uh, good morning once again, honorable members. What I'm, I'm, I will request to do, chair, is to go straight to, to the committee report, whereby there are five points which were picked as a as a response to the to the bill. <clears throat> yes, I'm trying to excuse me to open up as well. Uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Chair. The, the, uh, the committee, uh, having considered the Division of Revenue Bill, A3 of 2020, referred to it by the NCOP, and would like to comment as follows. The Eastern Cape province is always losing huge amounts on the equitable share. The committee is of the view that the formula used is disadvantageous to the province, and the province is further expected to lose more money during the current COVID-19 global pandemic. Number A B, the committee needs to be presented with strategies on how to defend the equitable share of the province, as this matter is long overdue from 2016-17 financial year. And C, the Eastern Cape province was penalized and lost the money for conditional grants, even though the money was underspent by our national treasury. D, the majority of the roads in the province are gravel, which results in very uh, high maintenance cost and the current equitable share formula does not provide for such uh, at attendant costs. And the last one, the decision taken to suspend Buffalo City Metropolitan Municipality from the public transport network grant is not welcomed by some of the stakeholders. The committee is of the view that the BCMM is the economic hub of the province for them not to get the, the grant. Those were the, 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 the concerns which were picked from the, from the bill. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Master. Um, can I put it to honorable members um, so that what we put forward uh, from the from our side as Eastern Cape is 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 clear um, in terms of the uh, the negotiating mandate. I know most of the stuff is not new that is captured here, uh, but also if one take from one commercial that has been there for ages. Uh, of Coca-Cola, um, you, you would realize that Coke would continue to make that commercial. As a result, it finds itself in the minds uh, of consumers. 
uh, as a result, whoever wants to buy whatever cold drink would uh, uh, often start with Coca-Cola. So it, it may be something that uh, has not sunk in our peers in the uh, national uh, uh, government, in particular the treasury. But it's a song that we've got to uh, sing daily as the Eastern Cape. Uh, for it to find uh, the heart of those so that our backlogs uh, are finally getting the attention uh, we need. Can I therefore invite members, um, you would bear with me, uh, honorable members, that uh, my system is not as functioning as yours. And uh, uh, I may have been alerted uh, but now I'm unable to follow because it does not show on the screen. It just indicates that someone wants to speak, uh, but now I can't, I'm unable to open it uh, in that sequence. Um, I've seen uh, Honorable Saziwa, Honorable Stevenson. Thank you. Uh, Fultan as well, please. Yes, in that order, Honorable Fultan, welcome, Lamin. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, can I invite you all members in that order um, so that we we formulate a concrete thing, but also uh, if there's clarity that has to be made, we also do that. Um, can I therefore invite you, Honorable Sazil? Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning to you and good morning to my fellow members and our support staff. Chair, just on, in terms of our committee report, um, on, 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 on C, is one of the points that we are raising. I think we need to strengthen that one because if you have looked at the number of grants that were given to the province, those grants have been curtailed or cut down, though the majority of them have been properly, you know, implemented or utilized by the province. So for us, we want to indicate that as the committee, we don't take kindly to the national uh, government cutting, on, you know, the, the figures on the grants while those grants have been properly utilized by the province. So there are two issues here. The one that talks to the under expenditure done by national treasury but this point that I'm um, that I'm featuring chair talks to the fact that if also we can talk about edu education grant, the province has done so well. But in terms of the division of revenue bill, they are cutting on that grant. So I think we must not uh, take kind around that as a committee. We must raise our objection around that. Therefore, it must be an incentive to a province that has spent properly the grant that was given to it. Than it must be used as a, penal, as, a, as a matter that penalizes the province. The second issue that, uh, that, I, that I want to strengthen in our province is the very point one. I want us to, because the current formula is talking to only the population. When you lose the population, therefore you lose the, your, the, the figures in terms of equitable share. All I want us to factor is that. There must be not a size fits all, in that Eastern Cape has been disadvantaged for a long time. Therefore, this equity distribution must take care of the fact that the Eastern Cape has um, experienced some backlogs. Therefore, there must be what I can call a positive discrimination towards the Eastern Cape in terms of saying that let's make sure that everybody is on equal scale in terms of ensuring that the, the, the grants that are given one that is given to the province attends to that than to be treated as if we are on the same path in terms of development. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable uh, Sadiq. I think that's that, that's quite a bit important what you are raising. Can I allow uh, Honorable Stevenson? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. My comment is to A in the report. Um, ever since the early 2000s, um, we have been constantly raising this issue 
of the uh, formula that's developed by the Finance and Fiscal Commission uh, is disadvantages, disadvantages the Eastern Cape because it doesn't take into account the historic backlogs that this province faces. Oh, and uh, we've been saying the same thing now for, for almost uh, 20 years. And I can remember when uh, a former member, Eddie Trent, moved to the National Parliament in the early 2000s, the then Premier, uh, the Honourable Stofili, uh, actually said to him, we are giving you a mandate on behalf of all of us to go to the National Parliament and fight to get this formula changed. So my, my, my comment, Chair, is we, we've been calling for this now as a province for about 20 years. So uh, at the next um, available opportunity, I think we need to sit down and discuss how we are actually going to tackle this um, once and for all in terms of engaging our colleagues in the national parliament or the national minister or something. But we can't carry on to j just singing the same song uh, without an actual action plan in, in, in place to try and change this. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Honourable Stevenson. Uh, I'm sure we shall have to formulate something concrete around this uh, after I've exhausted all the inputs from uh, Honourable colleagues. Um, Honourable Filter? Uh, thanks, uh, Honourable Chair. Good morning to uh, everybody. Um, Honourable Chair, just uh, three quick points here. One is around the uh, item 5B of the uh, report. I'm sorry, Ramin. I, can, I can't yeah. hear you. You sound a little good. Yeah. How is it now, sir? A little bit better, yeah. And now? Much more better. Thank you. I'm right on the, it's face to face with the screen. Uh, sure, it's ab about uh, 5D of the report. Um, I recall, Honorable Chair, that in our last meeting, uh, someone, I think from Trezor or something, did respond to say that we are not necessarily, the Treasury does not necessarily prescribe that the funds should be used only for tarred roads. This was in response to a point that I had raised, that a lot of our roads are actually gravel and we need funds for using, for, for maintaining gravel roads. And the response was that the funds are not necessarily prescribed for use on maintenance of tarred roads. So where I have got a question around this 5D, the way it is structured, given the fact that we did get a response uh, from Treasury to say the funds may, at our discretion, be used for gravel roads as well. So I want to suggest that we restructure that particular item. Also, Chair, the use of the term money, uh, when we're talking about government budgets, uh, I think my understanding is that the most commonly used term is funds rather than the term money. But your comments will, en will, will enrich, uh, you know, uh, the point here. Uh, lastly, Honorable Chair, I remember perfectly well that when we met as a committee uh, with the FFC, we uh, suggested to them, we had agreed rather as a meeting, that we should actually have a delegation that will talk to Treasury on this, ourselves as the Eastern Cape. Now, I think that was early in the year. I would like to know if we've had made any progress in that respect. This is uh, considering the inputs by Honorables Saziwa and Stevenson to say that um, on top of us objecting to this formula, we should actually be putting together a case specifically, you know, uh, to uh, say substitute this approach, of, which is population-based, with this formula. 
I don't know if we've ever done anything in that respect specifically since we met the FFC early this year. Thank you, Trey. Thank you. Uh, thank, 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 thank you, Honorable Sultan. Any other take from, uh, from members? Yes, Chairperson. Um, yes. Good morning, uh, once again, Chairperson. Good morning, colleagues. I think that um, I want to agree with what all members have said, um, and I also want to um, support the Honourable Stevenson. Um, it's all good and well. We keep, uh, keep mentioning this year after year, but the reality is that we are sitting with a province that's geographically the second biggest in the country. Historically, um, if you look at the province, half of, of our geographic area was part of the former homelands um, in, in the previous regime. So it is absolutely impossible and uh, for us to be able to, to make inroads in the, car, in the backlogs of, uh, that was created of the past um, by making use of, of, of this formula. And I think that it's, it's discriminating against the people of, of, of the Eastern Cape. We also have a, a, um, a unique situation to many of the other provinces where we've got two uh, um, uh, uh, metropolitan areas. Um, which we have to try and, and, and upgrade and, and develop. So I think that, that we, we all know on a, on, a, on a yearly basis, we see more and more of our children leaving the province be, uh, for greener pastures simply because we are failing to, to upgrade our own province because we haven't got the finances to do so. Remember, if we get, if we get a bigger share, uh, we can build more uh, a capital infrastructure and we can create more jobs for our people here. Yeah. So I think that, that um, uh, as was said by the members, no good enough to, to just uh, um, uh, uh, rehash the same old argument year after year after year. I would make a proposal, um, obviously, that we send this off um, um, as per your um, recommendations. The, uh, and then that we, we, we consider making, uh, creating a working group within our committee. Um, and that working group would be tasked by coming with coming up with recommendations uh, as to how we're going to to make uh, national government and the uh, provincial uh, and national treasury listen to us pertaining to changing this 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 formula i think you know the time for for just sub, is making submissions uh, on paper is 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 now is now uh, long gone one must also remember how politics work you know, we must have some heavy hitters there in, in, at a national level that fights for our province. So maybe I can speak to the Honorable Chairperson and maybe um, he and, and the MEC can speak to some of our members of parliament there. Um, but, but it's time that, that somebody starts batting for our province because it looks like it, um, you know, uh, we are made to, to, um, uh, to be one of the, let's just call it a little runt of the, uh, of the pack. But in any event, uh, I think, you know, those are my submissions. I think it's very important that we do create a working group within our committee and that we come up with, with key proposals. Um, and, you know, from, uh, um, although we note the, the recommendations, the Democratic Alliance obviously will object to, to this division of revenue bill. Um, but I, th I hope that, that the committee will support my recommendation as to um, uh, coming up with solutions to our, our problem. Thank you. Thanks. Honorable Honorable, uh, Honorable Saziwa, I've seen you indicated to come back again. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Chair. Um, I just want us to relook at uh, E, because according to me, E as current stands, uh, to me, is not saying anything. Because the reason that Kafano uh, was suspended on a transport network grant was this failure to utilize that grant. But the unfortunate part is that uh, we are not told about uh, the reasons for the failure. And I suspect at that time, Kafano did not have capacity but in terms of personnel and skills to uh, utilize that grant. Therefore, I think our committee report cannot just be silent about that. And I want to sponsor a view that says, we want to advise or suggest that uh, the National Treasurer must uh, review its decision to suspend Buffalo City in accessing this grant. 
And uh, by ensuring that one, it assesses the state of readiness by Papolo City to utilize this fund going forward than to just leave it as it is now. So my proposal is clearly saying the National Treasury must uh, review its decision to suspend and give Buffalo City a chance. But it must assist Buffalo City with necessary skills to be able to implement or to spend this grant. Whether they can, if possible, drag on an official from National Treasury to assist uh, Buffalo City maybe in the first uh, six months than just to leave this as it is, Chair. So uh, that is what I want to concretely you know, propose, Chair, than to leave this as it is now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Uh, I, I hope it's captured as such because uh, indeed it does not uh, uh, come as a concrete uh, submission. Um, because you're correct to say that there the are issues of capacities um, as well as issues of procurement around uh, this whole thing. In fact, it's one thing, anyway, uh, both the technical but also procurement related that were cited as uh, reasons for this uh, um, suspension of the grant to Buffalo City. Uh, reality is whatever sent that gets taken from the uh, provincial allocation, uh, a gap gets created, uh, there's no doubt. But coming back to the first submission that uh, yourself and Honorable Stevens uh, 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 also alluded to by Honorable Fultan uh, on the uh, on the outlook of the province uh, in terms of the allocations. Uh, it's a matter that I think it has to be dealt with in a two-way uh, uh, process. That also, uh, remember, we do not appear as a province that has a track record uh, consistently in so far as, as, as spending uh, is concerned, you know. Uh, we may have uh, showed some good spending in the past year or two. I'm just making an example, you know. Uh, but historically, we do not have that um, which has created an impression that whatever amounts that Eastern Cape uh, would, would, would seek to receive, it is not going to be spent uh, entirely. Um, so I'm saying that's another area also that uh, from the side of the province we've got to work out a strategy. Um, the second part is, it's true, um, as shown also by the uh, by this pandemic, uh, the COVID-19, how it is hitting our province, you know, and, 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 and also the dynamics around it in so far as the relationship with other provinces where we have a, a number of people that have been going out of the province uh, to seek better opportunities in Houghton, in Western Cape, uh, and all that. And we have seen the migration, uh, you know, uh, attesting to that insofar as the spread of the infections in the province, you know. Um, and, and clearly, it tells that at a particular time, if we are solely using the population, uh, as the uh, main uh, determining factor for uh, allocation uh, of funds, then Eastern Cape shall continue uh, to be marginalized in this process. And there's no doubt about it. And I think a radical uh, position, which is consistent with your earlier submissions uh, uh, of, of, of 
following up in terms of what the committee took as a, 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 a position earlier on that we make this delegation as a matter of urgency. Uh, I know that there has not been much in terms of human interaction in the process, but uh, I'm sure we are not going to stay in the state of affairs forever. You know. Immediately there is space, I think it's a matter that the committee needs to follow up, because it's one thing to have this on paper, it's another when we interact, um, so that we, uh, we put this uh, clearly, and also uh, adding to this recent uh, uh, spread of the pandemic in the province in particular, how it has attacked uh, the Eastern Cape and exposed uh, the, the gaps that the province has insofar as uh, services are concerned. So I think we, it's a matter that we need to, uh, uh, to consider uh, very urgently. Um, similarly, on the roads, uh, Honorable Fultan, you are correct to say that uh, what was presented was not uh, uh, said to be directed to uh, uh, tad roads entirely, but roads, state of roads in the province, uh, or in provinces, so to speak. But I must say that uh, as the province also, we seem not to have much initiative around uh, uh, roads uh, or roads maintenance and and roads work, so to speak, uh, uh, generally. Uh, there's lack of innovations there, you know, because uh, we know for the fact that it is not only time uh, that when you talk roads, construction, roads, maintenance, that should be at the center, but also there are other uh, alternatives to time. Uh, in even gravel itself, you know. Um, so I'm saying there has to be some innovations that gets to be brought uh, into the fore insofar as the province is concerned, you know. Um, can I therefore, if there's no other, um, if, 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 if I have captured or members feel that there is something that has not been captured, uh, allow that very quickly. I would want us in the next uh, five, 10 minutes to conclude uh, this meeting. Uh, but of course, areas okay. of coordinator, I hope you have noted, uh, and, and Doc as Comrade well, uh, support staff in that food, so that our formulations become uh, capturing of uh, what the public is saying, plus that needs to be. Comrade Chair? Uh, yes. Yes, Comrade Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair, and my apologies to come so late. I am reading the, the report. I am not yes. clear whether the UP is talking about the, the team that should be formulated to represent the committee in engaging national treasury about the equitable share. He says the committee needs to be presented with a, a strategy mm -hmm. to defend the equitable share. Or is it the same thing as to whether the committee must formulate and establish a team that is going to engage the national treasury on the equitable share for the province? So then U3 is saying the Eastern Cape was penalized and lost the money for conditional grant, even though the money was underspent by national treasury. I don't hear us saying anything here because if you could could hear that it, it's it's we, the Eastern Cape Provincial Treasury or the Eastern Cape is concerned that they were penalized of the and lost the grant, which was underspent by national treasury. If we can just clear this and formulate it in a manner that is going to be understandable. Because if that is the case, how can the Eastern Cape be penalized for the money that was not underspent by them, but rather was underspent by National Treasury? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, 
Thanks. Um, I, I hope this is noted, you know, that includes the relevancy of the, uh, of the language used. Uh, um, as, as, as suggested by Honorable Fultan, and now you also are talking to that, uh, the formulation that has to be worked on. Uh, do you have any comment, uh, Dr. Mr. Mafu? Uh, yes, Chair. Mm -hmm. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, Chair, the, I think we need just to, 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 to rephrase the, the point uh, 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 relating to the funding for the road maintenance. Yes. This is so because, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, the last year we had the same issue. And uh, the response was that there is... Uh, to me, the, the, the response was more like a blanket response because the provincial roads maintenance ground does not factor in the terrain of the province insofar as gravel roads are concerned, as well as the frequency of uh, maintenance, including also the unpredictable weather conditions. And that means there is a high rate of maintenance for gravel roads as compared to tarred roads. Therefore, that uh, response, or rather the, the wording of that uh, issue should, uh, should be highlighted as such so as to sensitize the, our national department that because of the terrain of the province and the many gravel roads, surely they cannot compare us um, for example, with with Gauteng and other similar provinces, because this is a rural rural province. That is all, Chair. Yes. Um, any other submission? C can I come in there, Chair? Yes. Right, so turn again. I, 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 I'm glad I've got someone who has specifically recommended that we rephrase that 5D. Uh, remember, for instance, that Gauteng benefited from when they had their roads done up, their tarred roads, and they're smiling where they are. So it should be our turn really to say specifically the funds will be used to uh, recondition and maintain our, our, our gravel roads. Uh, thanks very much, sir. Thank you. Sir? Yeah. Sir, President? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I just want to, if you are, the members agree that uh, in terms of the procedure, after having factored all the agreed upon proposal to further strengthen our report, that as a matter of principle, we move for the acceptance and adoption of our report. Of course, subject to those. Uh, uh, a proposal that we have made to stand the report being captured by our support staff. The third the issue Chair, that I want to raise is that uh, in terms of the agenda, there's also an indication of us uh, accepting our negotiating mandate. And I haven't seen that document in my, in my, in my emails. Maybe members do have, if they members do have, all we have to do is just also to adopt that uh, we're mandate for the province. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, uh, that, That's a proposal, honorable members. Can I get anything? Honorable Chair, still good Chair speaking. Yes. I fully yes, like to, to, to second uh, the, the proposal as stated by uh, Honorable Member Sasiwe and uh, that we accept it that way with the recommendations and proposals. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Members, can I um, quickly 
um, on 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 the basis of uh, um, the agreement that we have now. Um, also say I shall also be in the picture in terms of getting this uh, 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 taken care of uh, so that our formulation is indeed once more uh, is concrete. But the reality is uh, the issues that are not said uh, need to be brought in. Um, even if they were said earlier on, uh, in terms of the uh, what we call the national allocations to the province uh, and all these other issues of redress that have to be brought in. But also uh, in the same, I think we also agree that we should uh, uh, visit what earlier on we have said in terms of uh, facilitating this session with the National Treasury. And uh, uh, immediately we get the space. Uh, um, the committee shall to when taking into con uh, consideration also these uh, imperatives uh, posed by the uh, pandemic as well uh, in the country. So uh, those two things to me, uh, become important. Can I um, ask us um, can move to the following item in the agenda? I'm sorry, the honorable members. I'm, uh, yeah, this is what I've been struggling to get into. Um, in fact, in terms of our agenda, this is, is, is the main thing. Um, uh, solely, we were to get to uh, um, to discuss uh, the negotiating mandate as well as. Um, receive these uh, inputs, in fact, which are, of course, contributing to uh, to that negotiating mandate of the of the province. Um, the other important thing, honorable members, getting to item five, The last, hello? Hello, anyone speaking? Oh, okay. The, the, the last uh, sitting of the committee took a position to say, let's have a meeting um, with Treasury, as well as um, getting the interaction, uh, what to call a session with the departments that uh, are at the center of uh, of fighting the COVID spread in the in the province, and such departments, your your led by your health. The, the OTP, uh, COCTA, uh, social development, uh, you name them. That uh, a session in which we would be looking at the, uh, the expenditure uh, of the province in our fight to contain the spread of uh, uh, infections in the province, and also the preparedness uh, of our health facilities and all related uh, services around it. Um, it's a matter that I'm, I'm putting to the fore, 
um, because it takes us to another level, which I know it's not uh, in the domain of the portfolio committee necessarily, but it's a matter that uh, 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 has to get negotiated with the chair of chairs uh, for it to happen. Uh, I'm just I'm just putting it uh, for the members uh, to understand, and I know you do understand it uh, to be as such. Um, can I check in terms of the program, Miss um, Mugu? When is the date of the next meeting? Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, uh, uh, according to, to, to the program, I will still have to check the, um, the date of, of the next meeting and communicate with honorable members. And there are still the outstanding meeting the, the committee needs to, to, to convene as per the decisions of our last meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Honorable members, if there's anything that uh, any member feels you need to uh, quickly raise or share, you can quickly do that uh, before we conclude. Chair? If none, yes. I move for the close of the meeting, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was the Thank first you. one to look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Honorable and Members. No, Honorable Kutia <laughs> would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once more, Chair. Honorable Members. I, I know it is. Sorry, of... Chair. Yes. Sorry, Chair. Yes. Chair. You may come uh, in. Thank you, Chair. I think so yeah. for for the, for the purposes of recording, I think you should uh, put the report for for adoption by the members before you close the meeting. No, we didn't. Yeah. In other words, so far as the, 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 the negotiation mandate is concerned. Chair, you may you may have just. We miss the shade of the movie. Let's adopt. Uh, oh, my bonus is there. Yes. yes, we did with the amendments to be factored in. Thank you. Awesome. Oh. Mm. My apologies. Uh, Thank yeah. you, Chair. All right. All right, done. Uh, thank you, Honorable Members. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, sir. Cheers, then. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you.